Had a big week last week, kids. If you uh, saw my social media, did a food truck diary with Mike Tyson. That's right. Mike Tyson is on this week. Why, why, why do you have to say it like that? This guy's petrified. Like after meeting the guy, he's still petrified. Food truck diary. And that drops Thursday. We usually drop him on Thursday. So we got Mike Tyson on food truck diary. He's the only guy that I don't say only I do it for some other people, but he is one that we went to his operation, which isn't too far from me. He's kind of by the airport. Also ranch. Do we call Mike Tyson? Cause we call this Brent shop ranch. This ain't no ranch. That's I, it's not a ranch. I mean, it's good for marketing, I guess. But I was like, where the fuck is the ranch? This is an office building. Oh, uh, exposing Mike Tyson. I see. It. Um, it's interesting. I, I I like Mike Tyson. I, I love Mike Tyson. He's crushing. He's found his lane. His hot boxing shows huge. There's a butt coming. I'm the, the biggest guest in the world on. He's kind of the Kevin and I were talking about this before uh, we. Who's we Kevin? He's kind of like the uncle everybody has. He's the, he's the famous uncle now that got really. Into oh. <laughs> he's your. Like, listen to this dude, man. I bet like his whole delivery is like based on some other comedian. Like obnoxiously looking down on people <laughs> like whatever you know the way he's talking is just like a sense you get while he's talking he's making actually he's trying to give compliments i guess you know setting us all up for the okie doke but uh like even the compliments they don't seem sincere at all you know he's just just being cunty and even the way he says this shit, like, look at his face. Look at this dude's face. On. He's kind of the Kevin and I were talking about this before. Uh, we... So that just means Kevin told you that and you're telling it now on air. You know what I mean? Whoever Kevin is, you stole that line from him. It went on air. He's kind of like the uncle everybody has. He's the, he's the famous uncle now that got... Like, why is that bothering you, though, so much? You know what I mean? Like, I understand, like, why it would bother you. You could think, like, of a good reason for it. You know what I mean? But this dude, man, he's just... That's, like, that's strictly player-hating what he's doing. There's no well-thought-out shit that's going on here. You know what I mean? This dude is is completely reacting on a whim. Really into psychedelics. <laughs> He's your what do you know about it? You know what I mean? To even laugh or whatever? Like, shut up. Uncle, who was the baddest man on the planet at one point, and decided to get into psychedelics. And, you know, the thing of him dropping shrooms with Logan Paul went super viral. Here's a little insider secret. I think most people in the business know this by now. He does that every show. That's not like, uh, oh my God, Tyson's eating shrooms. Oh, he's trying to take like what shine of Logan Paul's podcast, you know, did it for your podcast too, huh? I guess it's not a big deal now. Like, why is that even a viral worthy thing? Really, it's disrespect for the host, right? I'm sure uh, Mike doesn't do shrooms like accepting um, Hall of Fame honors for, for fellow boxers or whatever, you know what I mean? Or inducting people and shit. Like, he's not on shrooms there. This dude, you know, he's trying to, like, minimize, I guess, the importance, which now, after thinking about it, I applaud him for. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go, Sean. Every single show, he's doing that. That's what he likes to do. God bless him. I don't judge him. It gets him to a different uh, place, and uh. he's more calm, more friendly, more creative, more... Uh, talkative so if that's what he so wants. he's gonna put that all on fucking shrooms <laughs> uh maybe mike said that too who knows man but i feel like that's just his perception you know mike's been kind of like the outgoing kind of dude you know he's not the introvert fucking anyway he wants to do by no means am i here to judge a man um but <laughs> it is a is it it is a different vibe and i, I don't know how showtime's gonna edit he kept calling me the n-word he kept calling me the N-word nonstop. And uh, uh, at one point, I looked over to like his guy. I'm like, is he so high he thinks I'm black? Or why, why are we doing this? Why does he keep calling me the N-word? And mm, I assume you were telling him that with your eyes, you know, like with a little 
flaring of your uh, nostrils. What's his case? You know, what's what's his issue, bro? Like, you, you, you're worrying about Mike Tyson calling a nigger? That's obviously a term of endearment, I'd say. Coming from Mike? Like, you got bigger shit to worry about. How about worry about you calling, like, the all-black uh, UFC panel or UFC cast at one point, like, like he was saying something about them, like the, the desk um, crew, I guess, you know, Tyron Woodley, Karen Bryant, and somebody else, I believe it was Eve Edwards. He went on his podcast and talked about like, like, uh, I guess Fox trying to fulfill some type of diversity um, quota, you know, calling these people quota hires, basically. Actually got himself in a little bit of trouble by making these type of comments before, right? Like, are these really the best brains for the sport and shit? Like, um, I get it, you're not racist. Insinuating, they couldn't, like, be eloquent in how they uh, present fucking UFC stats. Like, fuck off. He thinks Mike Tyson calling him nigger makes him blacker somehow. You know, no, it's your fucking two black co-hosts since you're Original white co-host has been fired for, uh, or has he been fired or resigned, who knows, man, for sexual misconduct, I guess. Allegations, at least. Went full black after that, Brenton Sharp. Um, I don't know, man, this guy. He's just an interesting dude, you know what I mean? Like, he forgets about his past when, like, what, what is a non-issue like Mike Tyson calling you the N-word? The N-word. And I don't know how Showtime's going to edit. He kept calling Edward nonstop. And uh, uh, at one point, I looked over to like his guy. I'm like, is he so high he thinks I'm black? Or why, why are we doing this? Why does he keep calling me the N-word? And I don't know. They, they, we just powered through it. We had a pasta truck called Pasta <laughs> Sister Shop. That place is powered through what? Like, is this guy... Like, he's an idiot. He's trying to make it seem like Mike Tyson somehow like ruined his podcast or something, you know? Well... What is it? Was it <laughs> like Mike Tyson is an intense dude? You should know that. And I actually felt like he handled the interview, if you can call it that. You know, he handled it pretty well. You know, for Brenton Sharp's fucking standards, man. I feel like he was. It was actually. I don't know. I I could get more from it than than watching like Joe Rogan kind of melt in front of Mike Tyson. You know what I mean? Or try to get Mike Tyson to some weird mode where he's like having to fight his demons on his show in front of him like fanboying like that was weird to me you know what i mean like brandon sharp is actually so full of himself that he actually can have a, like somewhat normal conversation with mike you know and uh it had like even it's deep moments and shit like it doesn't seem necessary what he's doing now it's like I do doing damage control, but there's nothing to damage control. Like, that was pretty decent, dude. Like, have a little bit of confidence in your product, I guess. But now he's trying to blame the guest for something. Like, nah, bro. Like, and that shit is all, like, surfacey. He's going to be all surfacey with this shit. Not get too deep in it, but if you read a little bit between the lines, like, this dude is hating on Mike. So good. <laughs> Pretty good. Oh, okay. Maybe I need, I, need, I need you to calm down. I, I went to the restaurant. I, I keep ordering for the restaurant. Oh, do you? Yeah. yeah. It's good. Yeah, yeah. It's good. I need you to calm down. All right, just a you little had bit. a 10? I'm excited. I'll give him an 8. All right. I'll give him an 8. I'll give him an 8. Uh, it's good. No <sighs> doubt it's good. Like, even like the fucking little spats with the producer and shit. Like, the dude is, I guess, there to, to somehow boost his credibility. You know what I mean? Like, act like a piece of shit to your producer and you might seem like a funny person or important or successful, you know. That's what a lot of these Brenton Sharp fans also come up with, right? Like, he's such a hard worker. Like, despite his disabilities, he's achieved and shit. Yeah. Yeah, I can respect that, definitely, man. You know? Um, but am I a fan of a guy with disabilities, though? You know what I mean? If just because he's a good, like he's actually not good at anything and just a hard worker, you know what I mean? 
It's a little bit, uh, I don't know, man. Like a participation trophy, like. I guess, also, like, not everybody is smart, man. So, obviously, he can have his fan base, too. But, uh, I'm allowed to, you know, if this, if a guy like this can be arrogant and, like, obnoxious and shit, like, I think I can make fun of him. And who am I, really, right? That's probably your argument. Nobody. Nobody. But who are you? And who is he? You know what I mean? Like, is that even an argument? Me being somebody. Tyson was not happy their sister's not working the truck. He was, <laughs> he took it literal that there the were sister. pasta sisters working the truck. Like, what? Again, he's high out of his mind mm -hmm. and he assumed that there's going to be sisters making our uh, <laughs> pasta and there was not. It's two Mexican dudes. And he was not happy at all with that. <laughs> this is funny. He ended up fucking. Uh, he, so it's a pasta truck, right? It's a pasta truck. And his team goes, Brandon, Mike Tyson can't eat carbs, so he's going to go with uh, salmon and broccoli. So we get there, and uh, Tyson's, uh, what do you have? And I'm like, I'll probably have the, you know, the, their fuck famous pasta. So everyone, I usually go with whichever one they say is their best dish. Mm -hmm. I let them pick. Usually I'll get both because I'm fat. So he's like, yeah, man, I, you know, I don't fuck with carbs. I don't fuck with pasta. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah, no doubt, man. Yeah, good for you. Looking good. And then good he for goes, you. Hey, can I get? He goes, yeah, I don't, I don't touch <laughs> his, carbs. Like, his compliments, man. He he'll he'll mix it up and 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 just like flub a compliment. He wanted to say, yeah, if it's working out for you or whatever, you're looking good. That's what he wanted to say. But it comes out good for you. Like he's such a, he's a cunt. Yeah, that's cool, man. And he goes, can I get salmon and mashed potatoes? Get and he goes, yeah, I don't, I don't touch carbs. I'm like, yeah, that's cool, man. And he goes, can I get salmon and mashed potatoes? Yeah, that's cool, man. Like that whole snippy snidey shit fuck off what? <laughs> oh did i did i and miss like a potatoes. big zinger he goes, yeah, I, don't, I don't touch cards i'm like yeah that's cool man and he goes can i get salmon and mashed potatoes what? <laughs> so uh that's food truck in a nutshell with mike tyson uh -huh. and so he had mashed potatoes. so is he calling mike tyson dumb is Brandon Sharp calling Mike Tyson dumb? That's my question. Is he calling him dumb? Is Brandon? What's your name? Brandon? Like, not him. You know what I mean? Audacity. He has the audacity <laughs> to call Mike Tyson dumb. Potatoes? Okay. And he was hype about it. When it came, he's like, oh shit, y'all really make food. I thought this was just for TV. He went, nope, this is a real food truck show. We actually give food here. And then he, uh, I didn't know this about psychedelics. But I guess so you I were know. being completely sarcastic to Mike Tyson in his face the whole time. So that was basically the episode. So for people that haven't seen it, they probably can rewatch it. And they're going to see you being sarcastic in fucking Mike Tyson's face. I've never done him ever in my life. Uh, is DMT a psychedelic? I think it is, yeah. I think okay, it is. so I have done them. Uh, rewind. Re re I have done them. Never done shrooms. So I guess when nah, you... Nah, bro, you would know. You haven't done anything. You did something that's a little harder than weed with Joe Rogan, and he told you he, you were doing DMT. And also Joe Rogan has never done DMT. You know what I mean? A certain type of person doesn't do that shit. And I don't... Like, Brandon Sharp doesn't do it. You know what I mean? He's like the type of guy that had never smoked or drank alcohol until he was 25 or some shit. Like, same shit with Joe Rogan. These dudes that are out there now, you know, they're all out there, you know, willing to try anything, all experimental and shit. Like, fuck off, bro. That's your new phase of life, you know. You just discovered some shit. Nothing wrong with that, too. Like, that's also a Joe Rogan thing. Nothing wrong with Joe Rogan. Like, fuck off. Fucking qualifying and backtracking, like, all the fucking time. Like, this motherfucker, man, probably told a lie once on, on, like, on the church or what's happening yesterday before the allegations, you know? Like, that, that little lie he told there, because he's, everybody knows he's, a, he's friends with Joe Rogan, so he can take a little bit of that uh, esoteric-ism, like, I don't know. 
that vibe kind of rubs off on him, I guess. You can make some shackles there too, right? Like, exploit every avenue. Not be satisfied. It's the hardworking part they're talking about. Just be all like a scheming um, schmeiser. On shrooms that you, you don't want to eat food. Well, it's a problem we're doing a, a food show because he didn't touch his food. He didn't even open it. Mm -hmm. But he's drunk about the mashed potatoes. And I didn't have the heart to tell him that those were carbs. They're hard to tell him, like an autistic child, right? You didn't have the heart to tell Mike Tyson something? Like, I love that he's now fucking the black nurse, you know? Like, he's Mike Tyson's black nurse, wheeling him out of the hospital. You didn't have the heart. I, I, guess, I don't know, man. Brent Sharp is, I guess, a bad person now, you know? Like, fully evolved into a bad person. And I pretended they weren't, because uh, he scared me, to be frank. He scared me, and I kept calling him Sir, and uh, great guy, fun app. Like, and he scared me, to be frank. Like, that whole delivery, even. Like, where did you see that shit, and where did you take that from? You know what I mean? He's such a manufactured person, bro. He's something else. Episode. Fun episode. Fun episode. It's again, it's, it's your uncle on psychedelics, and he kept uh, calling fighters hoes and their managers pin. Listen to this shit. It's all about analogies, and you have a little wisdom there. Uh, you know, you can pretty much decipher it, you know, right? But obviously not. I think he's just a fucking snake, bro. You know, he likes to play the friend card while, while you're in his, in his face and shit. And behind your back, obviously, he's going to go on his podcast and say, I've exposed Mike Tyson and did this and that. Just be fake and hope nobody watches every... Like, if you watch the fucking episode and watch this shit, you know he's a fake bastard, you know what I mean? But I guess that's not, that's not the demographic uh, he's worried about. You know, he's about the... Uh, Watching Mike Tyson and Logan Paul on shrooms going viral demographic. He's worried about them. And uh, it was great. It was great. We got a, I don't know if the Showtime got this behind the scenes. Me and him were having a conversation off the air. You know, obviously we're mic'd up, so who knows. But um, I don't want to say we got an argument, but we definitely had a debate over Ryan Garcia Tank Davis. What, he thinks Ryan has a Yeah, he thinks, he, you know. He, he thinks Ryan not only has a chance, but thinks he's going to win. Wow. And I told him he's out of his mind, which is probably bad to say to Mike Tyson when he's on shrooms. But then I was like, yeah, came down, I'm going to take him down. So, you know. It's uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really had to force this fake laugh. Listen. Mm. Okay. I guess it's like some... Like, this motherfucker sometimes talks about big dick energy. Like, he has small dick energy, man. The way he, like, threw that shit in. I guess you had an argument with Mike Tyson. You were, like, going into the debating Nate Diaz mode. Like, debating Na Nate Diaz in front of Showtime executives. You know, let's throw that in there. In your, what, I don't know what fucking snakeskin boots you had on. Like, you know? You were looking your, your finest. Were you looking your finest debating Mike Tyson? You know what I mean? Backtracking? Did you backtrack? Oh, it played out in your head, you said. You had an argument. You were debating him and calling him crazy for thinking something about boxing. Right? I'm not saying Mike Tyson can make a wrong pick, but what's your allegiance to fucking uh, Javante Davis? What's going on there, bro? You know? I guess he's a Showtime fighter. I guess uh, you know where your bread is buttered, right? It's not like you, you're you taking from your Golden Gloves experience and uh, applying it to a potential matchup of these fighters, right? It's not about that. You winning a Golden Gloves tournament against 18-year-olds or 30-year-olds. It's not about that, bro. You're just talking about uh, allegiance to your... To your, to your, to your you know, employer. I get that. But let's not act like you have some type of expertise over Mike Tyson. Like, you can fucking debate the dude. You know what I mean? Um, if you watch the podcast, 
I believe Brandon started out calling Mike Tyson the scariest fighter ever and shit. And when Mike Tyson talked to him, Mike Tyson was talking about Sunny Liston being the scariest fighter ever. And guess what? Brandon Sharp 100% agreed. So, you know, let's, uh, yeah. Listen, man, this motherfucker is talking about he could have taken Mike Tyson down. Did he say that shit? Like, he didn't look like a scared motherfucker, you know, doing that, that interview. Like, Joe Rogan actually looked scared of Mike. You know, there are other people that, that can you can't get that sense, you know, they're above their head, seemingly. I don't know. I, don't, I think Brandon is not, isn't smart enough to be scared of uh, Mike Tyson, you know what I mean? And some people would talk about, like, being really good at jiu-jitsu or some shit. Anyway, fucking... Uh, and he knocked out, I guess, Mirko Krokop, right? Um, <laughs> like, him knocking out Mirko Krokop, that, that actually looked like he really had power or some shit. The way Mirko Krokop got folded by that punch. Because it didn't really look like... Like a perfectly executed shot, you know? It was like... A swing and Mikko Krokop just folded, man. Probably can take him down and shit. Like, maybe that's real, a real assessment in his mind. Like, I believe that was... That was probably what he was thinking, man. Probably can take him down or some shit. You know, but the way he had to, is like, sneak that shit in. Like, while kind of downplaying Mike Tyson the whole way through. Like, it just fits perfectly. But also, like, his whole swagger isn't really... That of a guy that's really completely um, confident in his own words. What he thinks Ryan has, yeah, he thinks he, you know, he he thinks Ryan not only has a chance, he thinks he's gonna win. Wow! And I told him he's out of his mind, which is probably bad to say. To I like how the producer and him are now experts. <laughs> I saw him on shrooms, but then I was like, yeah. Came down, I forgot to take him down. So, you know, it that one did, did go through my head. And then, okay, <laughs> down, up, probably bad to say to Mike Tyson was on shrooms, but then I was like, yeah. came down, I forgot to take him down. So, you know, it that one did, did oh. go through my head. And then, oh, it's almost like he fucking practiced that shit in the, in the mirror, like before the podcast, splash water in his face and all. Whew. All right, all right, Brad. No, bro, you didn't deliver that line like you were supposed to. That wasn't good. I'm uncomfortable for you. Came down, I forgot to take him down. So, you know, it that one did, did go through my head. And then but, but, I think the the scene's out now where he has Ryan Garcia on the show and he FaceTimes Tank Davis and they get into it. <sighs> Listen, this come from a guy. <laughs> it's funny, bro. <laughs> like, is there anything positive to say? Like, that's, I, I feel justified to make this video because this guy is so negative, honestly. Because it didn't come off like that. And the whole interview didn't come off like that. So maybe you, people think he's, like, smart for doing that, I guess. You know what I mean? You know, that's called professionalism. Like, don't be the asshole you are in real life in front of Mike Tyson. Not on air. Not when the camera's on. But what's, what's wrong now? You know? What happened, bro? You were seeming like a big fan. You know, you were you were bigging him up and shit, like going through all the 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 notes, you know, the footnotes. Yeah, here, Mike Tyson. Oh, what an incredible change! And ah, oh, your past and whatever. You know what I mean? Going to the shtick, feeding Mike's ego and shit. But what now? Now it wasn't good. Like Mike getting these dudes involved and shit. Like what? Or do you have like some? Inside the information. I, who was in the middle of Jake Paul and Dylan Dennis uh, shenanigans, mm -hmm. I find this a little cringy. I found it cringy. I found, you know, him in the tuxedo, um, you know, it, it, I found it interesting. You know, call me crazy, man. I just, if I'm Ryan Garcia's team, and De La Hoya has said this, but apparently he's like, all right, fuck it, whatever this kid wants to do. I just don't see the rush to fight Tank Davis. I just don't think he's at that level yet. You know, he did have uh, a good fight against Luke Campbell, who is, you know, gold medal winner in the Olympics and uh, tough as they come, but never wins the real big fights in that division. 
And tough dude, man. You know, really tough dude. Went to decision with Lomachenko, which is nothing to, you know. It's not as tough as they come. That's not something I would say about Luke Campbell anyway, you know. Like, all this shit is, like, stolen from boxing news headlines, you know. I don't believe you. I don't know, man. Maybe he's just making something out of nothing. Maybe that's a good thing, you know. You need fucking something to talk about and being all, like, dismissive of everything. Maybe that's a good strategy, you know, for footage, for content. Maybe that's what he's going with, man, but... I don't know, bro. Maybe that that is what, what what's annoying me. Like, he doesn't seem smart enough to really make this shit work. You know, he's not. But he's doing it, man. So I guess props to the guy. <laughs> Frown upon. But, you know, he, he got dropped in the second round. You know, fundamentally, you wouldn't say he looked, you know, spot on. I just... I was like, oh, man, after that fight, I went, oh, man, hell yeah, passed a big test, has some work to do, probably still three to four fights away before he gets to the Tank Davis or a Lopez or something like that. But his team went, shut your fucking mouth, Shab. We're going for Tank. And he says in under two rounds. Okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe I'll eat crow here. Maybe I'll eat my words. And maybe when these guys say that, they know something I don't. You know? Listen, if Jeff Gordon tells you how to drive a car, take note. Michael Jordan says, hey, dude, on your jump shot, maybe try this out. I'm going to try this out. I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, shut up. With these analogies. Like, um, so Mike Tyson fucking picked Ryan? Is, is he saying that? <laughs> I don't know, bro. That doesn't seem right. I don't even see fucking Mike Tyson making a pick like that. I feel like he's, <laughs> he's trying to hype that shit up to get that boy Ryan maybe. I don't know, you know fucked up in the end maybe that's maybe i don't know that's what he's thinking he's thinking fucking tank needs a big fight it's not like fucking mike is trying to promote the shit for the sake of it and also fucking mike isn't doing fucking floyd's work right just thinking of it like that why is like he's pro bono promoting a potential fight between ryan garcia and tank davis like the Golden Boy and, and TMT, right? Like PVC and all that. And Al Heyman. What does Mike have to do with any of that? You know what I mean? The potential of maybe, you know, snagging a Ryan Garcia, who we've heard has trouble with Golden Boy and Oscar De La Hoya. I guess they're now mending fences and shit, but we see like something developing there. Maybe for Mike, you know what I mean? I don't even know if Mike's that type of dude, but who knows? Maybe he is, you know? Um, maybe he's trying to make some money off these young boxers. Or get somehow involved. Also, like, he's, he's, he's done the same thing. Like, obviously, people are thinking of it like uh, just an older fighter, you know, a guy that has a big name, lending a little bit of that limelight to the younger generation. But is that really Mike? You know? Then again, fucking Ali did the same thing uh, for Mike, you know? It was him always giving credit to Mike, always when, when Mike had his issues, you know? When Mike took losses or when Mike went to jail and everything, like, I never heard Mohamed Ali say one bad thing about Mike. Always, like, actually pleading with the public to give Mike chances, you know? And um, singing his laurels. Praising the dude. So maybe that's what Mike is doing. Maybe he sees something. And also, he's been talking about Tank Davis for a while now. So Tank is one of his favorite fighters. I've seen Ariel Helwani when he was still uh, doing the MMA hour. MMA fighting. Yeah. He did an interview with Mike Tyson. And that's maybe four years ago or something. And, and he was talking then about Tank. And uh, I believe Ariel Helwani asked, Tyson, if if Mike Tyson was able to fight Bruce Lee in a street fight, who'd win and shit? And you could really see like how Mike changed in that moment. Actually, it wasn't four years ago. That's been like maybe two years ago, one year ago. I don't know. Like Mike's whole demeanor changed, man, and he got that killer look in his eye, you know? 
<laughs> and he went all intense, man, and was like making a analogy, like how 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 would it turn out if? Just imagine me fighting Tank Davis in a street fight. Who do you think would win? Who who do you think? You know, just 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 imagine me and and Tank, me and Tank. <laughs> And the way he put it, man, you could see like Ariel Halwani, man. That was like, it was a scary moment. <laughs> like one of these scary moments that Mike will have, you know. Like his ego is involved now. <laughs> Obviously you, Mike. Uh, I'd assume you. And also, like I see fucking Mike tell Ryan Garcia when he was on hot boxing. Like, I, I don't think the podcast has come out yet, but um, Ryan Garcia was, I, I guess they... Posted like a little clip. And um, Mike said he saw Ryan Garcia put the bodyguard on on um, Francis Ngannou and, and hit him with these body shots, right? The body shot challenge, I guess. And he said, like, I'm going to put that shit on you and hit you with that shit. <laughs> Uh, he's like, you like to beat on these on these big guys. Let's let's see how you know what I mean. Are you like a big guy hitting on you? Ryan Garcia wasn't with it, understandably. It was just a funny moment, you know. Yeah, but what I'm saying with that is that Mike Tyson obviously believes in, you know, weight classes are for a reason. How did we come to that, right? Like fucking Brendan Sharp says, Mike Tyson picks a tank against Ryan Ryan Garcia. I think Mike Tyson is elated by like the braggadociousness of like a Ryan Garcia. Like he he came prepared to the to the podcast with the Ali quotes and everything. You know he was on his shit. And uh, what like Brent Sharp has an issue with like his tuxedo, whatever. <laughs> um, that wasn't important. I just like Mike getting all amped for, you know for that fake hype anyway you know i get it it wasn't like it was like a new generation type of thing you know and uh it felt like mike was just having a good time with that shit you know a little free free promo for you here and uh tank should appreciate it. actually Floyd mayweather and oscar de la hoya they should appreciate it man fucking mike doing their their work for them so Mike picking the dude and everything. Uh, that's most likely a fake story. The whole debate thing, you know what I mean? Him going over his thoughts and could I take him, could I not? Like, Brandon, that's all fake, I feel like. <laughs> when Mike Tyson goes, hey, in boxing, Ryan Davis can do this. Or, I'm sorry, Ryan Garcia can do this. You should probably listen. Yeah. I just don't have it in me not to argue. I should have been a lawyer. I like to argue and I do think right good for you good for you made it made it you made it around to being reasonable and that's good man i appreciate it maybe he's getting better you know after doing podcasts for 10 years um yes you shouldn't have fucking argued <laughs> but that's me going again with like the story being real. <laughs> it's a fake story. What am I doing? Oh my God. Tanks, the truth, and the king of the division. Uh, it, it's him or Lopez, man. Th those, those two are kind of the front leaders. And after that, you know, you got Haney, you got uh, Garcia, you got, you got these, these young lions there. But, you know, it's, it's Tank and Lopez, man. These young lions that are, what, two years younger than the other dudes? Like, even Lopez, he's young. What is he talking about? First of all, fucking Brandon Sharp, man, he hitches his flag to, like, the latest bandwagon, like, the, the most followers, and that's how he picks fights. All right, is this over or what? And speaking of Lopez, Ma Mateo, Mateo. Mateo? Mateo? Teofimo? Teofimo. Mateo, that's like that gay comedian, right? Listen to this dude, man, getting his... Uh, Industries mixed up. Tia Fimo. Tia Fimo. Tio. Tio. <laughs> Is he retarded, bro? Tia? Fimo. Mm -hmm. Tio Fimo. I got right on the show. Shaka yeah, yeah. In your face, Miss Famularo. Said a speech of him in fourth grade. In your fuck. Did, like. 
I just heard speech impediment, man, and it fit perfectly whatever gibberish was coming out before the... Like, I guess he just summed it up. What did he just say, motherfucker? Yeah. In your face, Miss Famularo. He said a speech impediment in fourth grade. In your fucking face, lady. Uh, Teofimo. Uh, Teofimo. <laughs> Look at him, like, in fucking face, hiding his cleave. Speech impediment in fourth grade. In your fucking face, lady. Hide them uh, goodies. Teofimo. Uh, Teofimo mm -hmm. Lopez, who's currently the undisputed world champion. Um, Did you just say Lopez, it wrong again? Uh, Teofimo. Uh, right. Teofimo mm -hmm. Lopez, who's currently okay. the anyway. undisputed world champion. Undisputed. Um, I had him on the show, and that dropped in two weeks, right? We do we do a food truck uh, uh, twice a month, every other week. All right. I had him on the show. And uh, he was an instrument one because what instrumenting a show, and uh, he was an instrument one because instrumenting. His father is his head coach, and obviously they're very close. If you ever watch a Lopez fight, his father's in the corner, super entertaining. It's like peanut butter and jelly, you know. Uh, Lopez uh, Teofimo will he's not really a shit talker, but his dad will take that phone and go after it, man, or. He'll get on the mic and, and kind of they're this one two combo. You know, so Teofimo is coming from Mike Tyson's ranch office. Let's call it what, what it is. It's coming from Mike Tyson's ranch office uh, to here, right? He did like a, a, a double header that day, came there to here. Super grateful, love Lopez. And I know Lopez watches the show. Shout out to Lopez. Oh my God, so, man. But his, like, there's so much fucking. Cloud chasing going on right now. The show, the show, the show. He did the show. And are you going to... Please, please just say what you got to say, bro. Dad smoked Mike Tyson's weed with Mike Tyson. So his dad comes here and usually, you know, his dad's about on an 8, scale 1 to 10. He's about on an 8. This dude came in a 10, a hot 10. He came in a hot 10, super animated, super ready to go. Um, God bless him. I love the relationship him and his son have. But it, that that one when it airs, and I'll, I'll talk about it more the week that it airs. You're getting a heavy dose of his dad. You're getting a heavy dose of his dad. Ooh, she's barely speaking English, man. All right, that's it for me. Peace.